Hi, Kath Gavin here. I just wanted to share with you my notes from 2 Timothy chapter 2, which I studied recently. In the previous chapter, Timothy was told to hold fast the form of sound words. But in this chapter, Paul instructs Timothy to pass these sound words on to faithful men who can then teach them to others. Timothy must also teach those who oppose himself, whilst avoiding vain and profane babblings, foolish and unlearned questions, and strife about words to no profit. Furthermore, he is to be gentle, patient, meek, and apt to teach, meaning a skillful teacher. To be a skillful teacher, it was necessary for Timothy to commit himself to study, as a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Timothy was a workman for God's kingdom. Indeed, Paul likened him to a farmer tilling the earth, an athlete striving for the prize, and a soldier dedicated to military service. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Striving for masteries could allude to a wrestling or boxing match. In either scenario, to be awarded the victor's crown, one must play by the rules of the sport. Verse 6. The husbandman that laboureth must be first partaker of the fruits. A farmer cannot yield a crop without following the rules of agriculture and first tilling the earth. Likewise, there are rules for spiritual success. This chapter contrasts two groups of people, those who abide by the rules and those who don't, faithful men and unfaithful men, vessels unto honour and vessels unto dishonour. Verse 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honour, and some to dishonour. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honour, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Only a vessel which is holy and set apart from the world is fit for the master's use. There are no shortcuts to spiritual success. The ground of one's own heart must be tilled before one can till another's. One's own vessel must be purged before one can help purge another's. Just as Jesus suffered leaving an example for us to follow, we suffer as an example for others to follow. We suffer in the sense that we deny self. In denying self, we lead by example. How many hours did Timothy spend alone in diligent study? How many hours did he spend alongside others, patiently teaching them? That's what Timothy's mother and grandmother did for him in teaching him the scriptures from when he was a child. That's what Timothy's spiritual father Paul did in writing him these letters. Hence, Timothy was the fruit of all their labors. Only through self-denial and patient continuance is a spiritual harvest reaped. Verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his, and let every one that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Repentance and heart purity are foundational truths. For each individual, the groundwork must be done in their own heart and a firm foundation laid. Yet how one builds upon that foundation also matters. Every brick and beam must be measured against the cornerstone, otherwise the building will be faulty. Sound doctrine is that which is according to godliness, and sound doctrine produces a sound building. That's why Timothy was instructed both to hold fast to the form of sound words and to pass them on to faithful men who could then teach them to others. Success in war, sport or farming doesn't happen by luck or magic. Neither does spiritual success. You have to play by the rules. 
I hope this was helpful and encouraging to you and I hope you have a wonderful week. God bless.